Okay, there's the angle of that roof line. It kind of cuts across the whole photo, right? You all have that photo, right? So you can all see it. Kind of cuts across. And if I look at the photo here, and I'm looking to see where it cuts across, it cuts across fairly low on the left side, fairly high on the right side. Well, where? If this is halfway up, well, that's, you know, maybe a third above the halfway point on this right-hand side. Down here, if that's halfway point, it's roughly halfway down-ish. Now, those measurements only make sense if the aspect ratio is the same here. So before I go any further, let's see if the aspect ratio is the same. Here's an easy way to find out. From corner to corner of my canvas, let's say, so this is my canvas. I take my photo and I line it up with the corner, and then I've got to measure from corner to corner if it lines up with the corners of my photo. If all these corners line up, then your aspect ratio is the same. doesn't line up completely. So it's not exactly the same aspect ratio. So I might just cut off one or one side or the other. So instead I'll just look at my asp I'll look at my angle, you know, and I'll kind of go, okay, that's the angle it is, and I'm just gonna plop it in right here. Why not? Ish. And I just kind of throw it in there. I'm not worried about it being exactly perfect, but now I've got the starting point. Now I'm going to do the same thing with all the other angles. And what happens is the angles will all change. Because roughly, imagine if there was a, if we were doing a, a perspective point, the dot would be somewhere way off down here somewhere. And all the angles are coming off that dot. So they're all going to kind of curve either down or up as they go up and down. But if I do it this way, where I'm just doing this, do do do. I don't even have to worry about where that vanishing point is. I'm getting my angles right just using this. And it always looks a little bit more um, relaxed to me when I do it this way. Whereas if I have a ruler and I'm trying to measure everything exactly, it looks tight right off the get-go, then I'm more tight as I'm painting it, and then it feels like it's just too um, uptight. Do I want to add in those um, satellite dishes? I don't. I'm going to leave them out. Screw it. They're gone. Okay, so I've kind of got, you know, the basic shape of that little building there. I've skipped the... Um, those satellite dishes, I didn't think they were important. I'm not gonna worry about them. I mean, I would, when I start painting, put in all those other little lines, all the little calligraphy lines and such, but I'm not gonna worry about any of that right now. It's not integral to the painting. It'll come in later at the end. Those are little pieces I'll do later. I might get in that little um, chimney there. That breaks that up nicely. And then um, all the shadows are just as important so there are all these little things going on in here. I could draw all of these and get them in. But the most important things of those, again, is that the shadow. And I still have to, even though I'm not doing it right now, I should make sure I get the angle right on those shadows. Because even the angles on those shadows will make all the difference. Okay. all these little bits. I don't worry about those quite yet. I'll put in all those details later. If I draw too much detail on this stuff now, I'm just gonna lose it anyway. So there's no point. Just get the idea in there. Then there's a big shadow here. These shadows help draw your eyes in places. Same thing underneath. It's a lot of back and forth, just measuring. Now I'm gonna show you guys something here. Take a look at this photo. Look at the roof line. Okay, now if I drag my dowel straight down, see what I'm talking about with the angle, how the angle is different. So even something fairly close. So you always want to just make sure you get your angle figured out here first. Then go down, figure out where it's going to be, roughly. Roughly. 
draw it in. That's my angle for that shadow. So it's a little different than the angle of the top of the roof. I didn't have to draw vanishing points, but by just doing it that way, I can, I can get that in. So much quicker, so much more fun. Also, when I go in here, I'll look at where places line up. Like, look at the side of this chimney. If I go straight down, it almost lines up with the side of that balcony. I can either keep it and have it be like right underneath of it or I can move it a little bit. That doesn't matter. I might just keep it right under, I might make it go right underneath a little bit. And even for that, that um, top of that railing, I wanna measure it, the angle, making sure that my photo is perfectly parallel to the top of my canvas, top of my photo to the top of my canvas. Get that angle. This is what my drawings will tend to look like before I start painting. It's just a wireframe. A wireframe of the shadows, a wireframe of the main shapes. And then I go in with my little brush and just wipe off the excess pigment. And that's a good starting point for me to paint. So I'm going to look at my shadow area, and based on, on these color swatches I kind of tested out the paint with and wrote down my little notes on, I can kind of go and say, okay, which one seems closest, you know, to that shadow? I kind of feel like it's this color right here. So what's this color right here, like the shadow? That might not be right, but I'll try it. So let's see. It's titanium white plus that um, orange iron oxide. And then I added a little bit of my black, which is the brown and the blue. And then I added a little bit of, of um, my yellow and, and red. But hey, look over here. That looks almost exactly the same as that. But that was a simpler mix. That's just brown and white with a little bit of that transparent orange mixed into it. So I can get the same place roughly by just doing different. The only way to know which one I want to use is by doing these different tests. And the simpler one is the one I'm gonna go for because it's easier. So I'm gonna take my brown and my white and I'm gonna mix them together. When I'm mixing with my palette knife, what I do is I take the flat end of that palette knife and I scrape off from the edge of the blob of paint a little bit of that brown, scrape off from the edge of the white a little bit of that white and then I'm gonna mix those two together. If it's too light, then I just need to add more brown. If it's too dark, I need to add more white. I wanna get the rough value about where I want it to be. And I'm gonna squint my eyes, take a little bit of that color, hold it up, squint my eyes, and look and see, is it roughly the same value? Does it disappear when I squint my eyes? It does, so I know my value is roughly right. Now I'm gonna grab some orange, just a little bit. If I go in and scoop out a big bunch of orange, it's gonna go orange right away. I always like take just a little bit and add it. Look at my picture, take a little bit more, add it. Take a look, well, you know what? I'm gonna add a touch of yellow and see if that helps. That's how I mix my color. It's a lot of back and forth, taking a look, and then it's not very sexy, right? I mean, it would be great if we could just mix it perfectly the first time. It's a lot of back and forth and just kind of looking and saying, oh, maybe, maybe a little more orange, a little more yellow. Now let's see where, now let's see where we're at. Oh, still a little more orange, still a little more yellow. I don't talk out loud to myself though. That's just for your benefit. Okay, roughly, eh, might not be perfect, but that's okay, no big deal. As long as my value is right, that's where I wanna be. I can always adjust the color a little bit later. I'm gonna dip my brush in water, and here's the key. I'm not just gonna scoop out a bunch of water and add it to my paint. What I do is, I go. see how I go to the edge of my bucket? I dip it in and get some water, so that my brush, when I push it on the edge of that cup or the bottle of water, the bristles splay out. That soaks up water inside without it being soaking wet. 
So I push it against the edge and I just soak up some water and then I just kind of wipe it on the edge of my um, cup. So now I don't have too much water. It's not a watercolor. We're not watercoloring. We're, we're acrylic and oil painting. And so then I can just go in and I can start adding it in. Now, I'm painting on canvas. See what's happening here? Do you see all those little specks? This is a canvas that's drier. It's soaking up all the paint faster than I can get on there. So I go in and I add more water. Little bits at a time until I get to a point where the viscosity is right, that it soaks down into all those little nooks and crannies in that, in that um, canvas. See that? Now it's soaking in there. If I add too much water, my color is gonna go too light right off the get-go. I'm squinting my eyes and I'm just gonna paint this whole thing. There's a little bit of um, a color change underneath the roof line, but for now I'm not gonna worry about it. I just wanna get these big values in here. And in fact, you know what? I'm just gonna go over that whole door. I'll paint that door back in later. See what I said about I'm wrecking my drawing? I don't wanna to be too precious with the drawing because it's going away. And you know what? I'm just gonna do the whole part of the railing and I'll add those little nooks and crannies of the railing later as well. I wanna get the abstracted shapes in here. Okay, I have a little too much water. I've gotta mix more paint. I'd go back to my palette knife, but you know what? Just for speed, cause you're all sitting here watching paint dry, literally. <laughs> I'm just gonna use my brush and try and speed up that process a little bit. And I'm gonna paint right through part of my um, railing here because that whole door, you know what? I just see it as being dark and I can always put that railing in on top. But all those little intricacies, I don't wanna to have to paint around them. So I'm just gonna paint right through them. And if I don't mix my color perfectly each time, whatever, it's all good, no big deal. I just wanna make sure that my value is roughly right. So if I need to get a little darker, I can get a little bit darker. Especially if I've added water, water can lighten up your value. Okay, so there's my main abstracted shape on that building. Now I'm gonna to go to the next building I'm gonna clean off my brush by wiping it on my paper towel. I get as much pigment out as I can by squeezing it. Then I tap it on the firmly on the bottom of that water. Then I wipe it off again. But now for this shadow um, that I'm gonna work on, which is right here, do you see how it's a different color than this shadow? It has a little bit of blue in it. It's more grayish than this shadow because this shadow is, is warmer because there's actually like another building in front of it reflecting some light, but regardless, even if you don't know why it's happening, it is. So we're gonna just put a little bit of blue in there and gray up the color. Once I put blue in there, it darkens it up a little bit. I want it to be the same value as what's happening here. So I'm just gonna add a little blue, add it a little bit of white to help lighten it. So I want it roughly the same value, but it's a different color. Feedback. So here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go in and just put in some more of these general shapes. And this is it, you guys, for now, okay? The um, detail work comes in later, but for now, I just wanna go in and, and create some of these shapes. This shape up here, for example, nice and dark, because that roof line is quite dark. I'm using a slightly different size brush because it's a smaller area. I'm squinting my eyes and I see the, the top of that roof line is quite dark too. And I want to push that brush into that canvas. It drives me crazy, all those little white specks of color. It drives me crazy. So I like to push it in there. Um, and then um, the rest of the roof line is a little bit lighter. I'm gonna use the same size brush and now I'm gonna put it just to start throwing in some other color, like this color here to start covering up that line where I just colored outside the lines. So that color there, I think it's about this color. I think it's it's roughly, well, it could be, yeah, I think it's this one. I think it's just titanium white and that orange that I gave you guys. So I'm gonna give it a go. 
And if I want to pink it up a little bit, I could always add a touch of red, but I'm just going to start there. Titanium white, and that's that orange mixed with white. It's quite lovely. Mm -hmm. I think it works. Works well enough. Now, whatever I do with this orange, when I look at my picture, it's got to be darker than my sky. So whatever value I make this now, I know that later I'm going to have to darken up my sky. So I don't want to go too light right off the get-go with this orange. If I go too light, then I'm going to really have to, I'm going to be just a white sky. So for my sky, I know that's got to be lighter than this. Now, if I just mix that blue and white, I get quite a cold blue. Do you see that? It's, it's quite cold. And what I mean by cold is when I look at next to this blue, this blue is much more um, kind of cerulean blue, really. It's, it's got a little bit of yellowy tone to it. I can try and add some yellow to it, but this is one of those situations where the tube matters because I can't mix that exact shade of blue with this blue. I can't do it. I can try and approximate it by adding some yellow to my color. See, that's a little bit better, but it's still never going to be that clean, kind of turquoisey leaning blue. The only way to get that exact blue is to buy it out of the tube. So I just do the best I can. I take my blue, I add some white. I might add a tiny, tiny dot of the yellow to help make it a little bit warmer than it was, but I'm, I'm, never, I'm not gonna worry about getting exactly the same color of blue. I want the, um, the value to be right though. And then I'm lightening it as I move. So now I'm gonna take that same color and I'm gonna add a nice big blob of white and then maybe another tiny dot of yellow if I, if I totally lost all my color. So now my color should be a little, just a little bit lighter than it was. And every time I move over, I'm getting a little bit lighter and now I've gotta be more careful as I go around. Again, I'm still not worrying about any of that calligraphy yet on the top of that building. I'm just going around the building still using that big brush and I'm just carving out the negative space. That's the area around the buildings. I just do these flat areas of color to start. Just squinting my eyes to see the big shapes, you know, where I see some darks and some lights without worrying about any tons of detail because I can go in on top of this later and do that. So here we've gone, now we're at my railing shadow. Let me get rid of that soft edge because I don't need it. Okay, now here's what I'm gonna do with my, um, sh my railing. I'm gonna squint my eyes and I'm gonna go like this and this. And I kind of see a line going across this way, so I'm not going to go any higher than that. Now I can make it more exact and perfect than this and get it right. Or I could just do it like this and give the impression of the 
the railing. Okay, you can take your time and add more of the details and make them right, or you could just do it, have fun with it, and just throw those dots in there, looking at where they end and where they start. They kind of come down on an angle here and they go across here to give the impression of the detail of that railing. That's easier to do than to take those dark lines and, and draw it. This is just about squinting your eyes and trying to find kind of where some things are happening and give the impression of it. 